We're United Hospital Center, one of the region's most respected medical centers since 1970. We are a collection of compassionate people with boundless emotional support and unconditional devotion. We combine the science of medicine and the generosity of the human heart to deliver world-class care for more than 100,000 residents of North Central West Virginia. And we are home to the Cecil B. Highland Jr. and Barbara B. Highland Cancer Center, a fully accredited, comprehensive community cancer program. With the quiet yet generous help of the Highland family, the Cancer Center at UHC provides the entire continuum of cancer-related services in a single location that is designed for patient comfort and accessibility. United Hospital Center is a magnet for the hearts and hands that make a difference people who thrive on the purpose of contributing to life, where high country and mirrored lakes are gifts that we call almost heaven, near forests that have never seen a road. Medical progress is taking shape for future generations. Today, the future of health care is here. I'm Linda Carr, Director of Oncology here at UHC's Cancer Center. And I'm Dr. Jeff Madden, a general surgeon and cancer liaison physician. If there's one point I want you to take away from this video, it's the fact that UHC offers a multidisciplinary approach to cancer treatment. What that means for you is that we have teams of experts that will come together to formulate the best treatment plan for your cancer. All aspects of cancer care that a patient may require are available at UHC. This starts with early detection and screening and may progress to surgery, medical and radiation oncology, inpatient and outpatient treatment, home care, and when appropriate, hospice. United Hospital Center has been recognized by the American College of Surgeons Commission on Cancer as a comprehensive community cancer program. What that means is that our patients have access to the latest cancer protocols and experimental treatments maybe not yet released by the Food and Drug Administration. At UHC, we're also here to help you with the emotions brought on by cancer, your shock and disbelief, your fears and tears, and your anger. These are not only very real, they're also very common experiences after the diagnosis. You're not in this alone. We are here for you and your family every step of the way. In January of 2012, I had my annual yearly mammogram. A few weeks later, I received a card in the mail requesting that I come for additional films. When I did, I was referred to a surgeon. When I talked to my surgeon, he told me that my mammogram was a class four and that I had an 80% chance of everything being okay. When I walked into his office in March of 2013 after having had surgery, he told me that I had invasive breast cancer. My world turned totally gray. The color was gone from everything. All I could think about was What's going to happen to my mother because at the time I was also taking care of her? And what about my daughter in Chicago? I was terribly worried and didn't know which way to turn. And this is where I come in. I'm Peggy Johnson, registered nurse, clinical navigator for United Hospital Center. I've been in this position since March of 2012. And one of the main purposes of my position is to see the breast cancer patient through their cancer journey. The clinical navigator for breast health encompasses a lot of different responsibilities. One of them is to get the education out to the community about prevention and early detection of breast cancer. Another thing would be to be with the patient through pre-diagnosis and if there is a malignancy to see them through education, resources, and the cancer journey. I am the advocate, the liaison, the educator, and the friend. In time of fear and anxiety, those can be barriers to not getting the health care that is needed. We want to relieve the fear and the anxiety for the patient. We want them to get the right treatment at the right time by the right person. Uh, in uh, t December 2006, I went to have a knee surgery done and uh, everything was good. I had no pain, no nothing except for the knee. I was taking medication for the knee 
and uh, I assumed that uh, I went to the restroom and seen some blood in my stool. So I, I just assumed it was something to do with the knee. Uh, with further investigation, I had a doc we did a colonoscopy and I found out that I had uh, stage four colon cancer. After a, a series of surgeries, I came back to United Hospital Center to have my uh, treatments done here, the chemo in the, in the, in the infusion center. And uh, the staff, Dr. Osmond, a great, great bunch of people to have around, very encouraging, uh, very uplifting. To me, to, to the best advice I could give anybody with, with uh, uh, diagnosed with cancer is to research it. Find out everything you can about it. In my situation where I was at, I was cancer illiterate. I didn't know nothing about it. I, I just, you know, you heard the word cancer and you think, well, I hope they get better. But when it struck home to me, then I had to really go find out what was the best for me. Five years later, and I'm still here, and I feel better today than I ever did in my life. And, uh, you know, things are going great. This video will prepare you for your next step in your journey with us at UHC's Cancer Center. With the click of a mouse, you can learn more about cancer and various cancer treatment options, including surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. We'll discuss with you the importance of good communication with your doctors and various pain management techniques. Plus, we'll prepare you to fight fatigue while you're undergoing treatment, give you some advanced planning ideas, eating tips, show you how you can get involved with a variety of support groups, and provide you with a tour of the facility. Thank you for choosing the Cecil B. Highland Jr. and Barbara B. Highland Cancer Center at UHC. Hello, my name is Gerald Wiedemeyer. I'm one of the pathologists here at United Hospital Center. And I look at tissues that are taken out by surgeons. You can see my microscope here in the background. Uh, I spend much of my day looking at tissues and determining which of those have cancer and which of those do not have cancer. We inherit characteristics from our parents, color of our eyes, color of our hair, height, and so forth. And in the same way, cells inherit characteristics from the cells that preceded them. But occasionally things go wrong. We've seen where good parents sometimes have bad children. And similarly, uh, cancer cells sometimes develop characteristics which are different from those that they derive from. One of the Specific characteristics is the ability to grow without control. When this occurs, the cells continue to multiply and accumulate until they form a mass of cells or a ball which can be either seen or felt. And this is called a tumor, something that uh, is enlarged or swollen. Occasionally, some of the cells within that tumor can develop the characteristic of being able to leave the original site and migrate to other parts of the body and grow. UHC surgeons and physicians rely on the pathologist to determine a patient's treatment. First, a sample of the tumor or the entire tumor is removed by a surgeon and delivered to the pathology lab. Next, small parts of the sample are put onto a glass slide and examined under a microscope. The pathologist then determines if this is a malignant tumor or a benign tumor, or possibly is not a tumor at all. If the tumor is malignant, the pathologist determines where the tumor originated. Most cancerous tumors come from types of cells that either cover our skin, line our intestinal tract, line our lungs, or found in the liver. The pathologist also determines how advanced the tumor is, if the tumor will recur, and if it is treatable. The information gathered by the pathologist guides the physician in determining a patient's treatment plan. I'm Salman Osman. I'm one of the medical oncologists here at the United Hospital Center Cancer Center. The goals of therapy depend from cancer to cancer and also the stage of the disease. 
Usually the earlier the stage of the disease, the intent to treat is to cure the disease. The later the stage of the disease, the intent to treat is to prevent symptoms from the cancer and also improve quality of life. Cancer care across the country is changing on a daily basis. Nowadays, the focus of therapy is more targeted, whereas previously it used to be more generalized. Also, moreover, more and more clinical trials are being opened across the country, which give us a new insight towards the various pathways we can take as far as treating a cancer is concerned. We see new patients on a daily basis who come to us seeking our expertise on cancer treatments. The best advice I can give to my patients when we diagnose them with their cancer is ask questions, write down questions, research it over the internet, communicate with their healthcare professional, including their nursing staff, so we can provide them with the best possible care. I tell my patients, we're in this together. I am Carl Fisher. I am a general surgeon at United Hospital Center. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how general surgeons, people like me, help with the management of your cancer care. We do things like make biopsies to help with diagnosis. We help with the therapy of cancer in terms of treatments such as operations for colon cancer or breast cancer. We provide help to your oncology specialists by placing ports or catheters that allow them to deliver uh, chemotherapy agents to you in a more comfortable fashion. Whether a patient is a candidate for surgery depends on factors such as the type, size, location, grade, and stage of the tumor, as well as general health factors such as age, physical fitness, and other medical conditions. Following certain types of surgery, there is almost always going to be some kind of wound or incision. That wound or incision is usually closed with sutures or staples. After the operation, the physician, a nurse, or a physician's assistant will discuss care of your wound. For many patients, surgery will be combined with other cancer treatments, such as chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or hormone therapy. These may be administered before surgery or after surgery to help prevent cancer growth, spread, or recurrence. I have to tell people they have a diagnosis of cancer every day. Often they'll come back to the office after a biopsy. It's a scary thing to say, and it's understandable. But I'm here to tell you that we're here to help you, that we know what we're doing, but we need your help too. It's important to always take a positive outlook. The glass can either be half full or half empty. If you make the glass half full, we're going to get there together. I'm Dr. Paul Brager. I'm a medical oncologist. I'm director of the United Hospital Center Cancer Center. A medical oncologist is a physician who diagnoses and treats cancer generally with chemotherapy or biotherapies. Chemotherapy are drugs that are used to fight cancer. They can be uh, given in a variety of ways, but generally either intravenously or orally. Biotherapy is uh, somewhat more directed therapy uh, and also can be given intravenously or orally and in combination with chemotherapy. At UHC, we normally treat three broad groups of patients with chemotherapy. The first group is patients who have cancer that has spread throughout the body. We treat those patients with the intent of putting them into complete or partial remission. The second group is those patients who have had their cancer surgically removed, as in breast cancer and colon cancer. Chemotherapy is used to lower their risk of the cancer returning. The third group is made up of patients who have locally advanced disease, which cannot be surgically removed. These patients are treated with a combination chemotherapy and radiation therapy with the intent to shrink the cancer as much as possible. If the tumor still exists but is smaller, it can be removed surgically. Your UHC doctor may schedule a series of chemotherapy treatments spread out over a period of weeks or months. This allows your body to recover between treatments. 
Side effects of chemotherapy include a weakened immune system, nausea, hair loss, decreased appetite, fatigue, anemia, bruising, and diarrhea. It is important to rest eat nutritious foods, and take medications prescribed by your doctors to reduce or minimize these side effects. Communicating with your physician and healthcare team is very important in terms of uh, treating and lessening the side effects that uh, you may experience while taking chemotherapy. I am Michael Stewart, the Director of Radiation Oncology at United Hospital Center for the past 20 years. My specialty is radiation oncology, which is the treatment of most types of cancer with radiation therapy. At United Hospital Center, we treat almost all types of cancer. Not all of them are treated with radiation, but some of the more common ones that we treat are cancers of the breast, lung, prostate, colon, head and neck, and many types of female cancers. We offer several different types of radiation treatment. The most commonly used one is called external beam radiation therapy, which is delivered utilizing a machine called the linear accelerator, an example of which you see behind me. Another common type of radiation that we use for certain types of cancers is called brachytherapy, where we actually put radioactive sources inside a patient. We're also fortunate at this hospital to have a type of radiation called superficial x-rays. This is a wonderful type of radiation that is used to treat skin cancers around the face. Very few facilities in the state possess this type of equipment. Depending on the part of your body being treated, you may have side effects that include skin changes like dryness, itching, peeling or blistering, fatigue, diarrhea, hair loss in the treatment area, mouth problems, nausea and vomiting, sexual changes, swelling, trouble swallowing, and urinary and bladder changes. Most of these side effects go away within two months after radiation therapy is finished. Our number one goal at United Hospital Center is to deliver the best possible care given your diagnosis of cancer. Please feel free to ask any of us any questions that you might have. In fact, I make myself available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to both you and your family for any concerns that you might have. I am Corinne Stewart. I'm a pain management physician at United Hospital Center. I'm going to talk to you today about pain as it relates to cancer. Uh, while many patients will not experience pain during the course of their diagnosis and, and treatment of their cancer, many patients do experience pain either as a direct result of the cancer or as a result of the treatment of the cancer. Uh, there are multiple options for the treatment of pain uh, with your cancer. They include uh, medication management. There are many types of medications that we use to treat cancer pain. Uh, not just opioid medications, but opioid medications are often used. Uh, there are various types of injection therapies uh, that we can use to treat cancer pain. Physical therapy can become a part of cancer treatment, uh, as well as psychological uh, treatments to help things like cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, guided imagery things like this that can help with your pain. Inadequate pain control can interfere with the body's ability to heal. By increasing physiologic stress and decreasing your ability to move, the pain can possibly diminish the body's ability to fight infection. Remember, the goal of pain management is to prevent the pain from occurring. Everyone has a very individual experience with pain. The first step and most important step is to let your physician know that you are having pain especially when it begins to impact your quality of life or your ability to do tasks through the day. This is pain that needs to be treated. There are some common misconceptions with regard to pain uh, during the course of your cancer workup and treatment. Uh, sometimes patients feel that pain means their cancer is spreading or getting worse or it's not being treated properly. This, the majority of time, is not the case. So it's important that you tell your practitioner uh, if you are having increasing or worsening pain. You and your doctor will discuss a pain treatment plan based on how severe your pain is. 
how often it occurs, and where it is located. A good way to keep track of your pain is with a daily pain log. The pain log should include what medications you are taking, when you take them, and how severe your pain is before you take the medicine and an hour after you take the medicine. There are many different pain scales available today. One example of a pain scale would be one with a rating of 0 to 10. 0 being no pain at all and 10 being the most severe pain that you have ever experienced. Often patients will fear addiction with opioid type medications. It's the vast minority of patients that tend to have problems with addiction and these things are closely monitored uh, while receiving medications for pain with cancer. It's important that if you have any concern with regard to side effects to the medications that you're taking that you let your physician know about this. Your physician will be monitoring your use and response to each medication used. Keep the lines of communication open. We're in this journey together. I'm Jenny Vincent, Occupational Therapist with United Hospital Center. Today I'm going to be speaking with you a little bit about rehabilitation services. Following cancer diagnosis, um, many have questions about how will my strength be? Will I be able to return to my quality of life? Will I be able to get up and go to work tomorrow? Uh, our services provide a variety of uh, tasks and techniques that will help to increase your endurance, your strength, and bring back your quality of life. One of the services that we provide here at United Hospital Center is lymphedema treatment. Lymphedema is an episode of abnormal swelling which can occur at a time after lymph node dissection, whether it be at your arm or your leg or any area of the body. An abnormal, thick, rich protein accumulates within the tissue, causing the skin to swell. At times, patients will describe this discomfort as a heaviness, a tingling, or even pain can occur. Our job as therapists is to teach you, the patient, what to do in these circumstances. There are many preventative approaches in reducing the swelling of the limb, returning it back to its normal state, and then returning you back to your normal strength and your ability to carry out everyday activities. Much of what is involved with this treatment is a specialized type of massage and compression bandaging. At this point, we basically take the patient, we begin to manipulate the lymph nodes which are intact into reabsorbing extra fluid which has been seeped out into the tissue. The patient is then compression bandaged for a short two to four week time span and then fitted with a custom made compression sleeve. These garments help to reduce the size of the limb, maintain the size of the limb, prevent infection, and allow the patient to return to their normal level of function. I'm Lisa Carr. I'm one of the dietitians here at United Hospital Center, and I'm here today to talk to you about nutrition and your cancer diagnosis. Eating well is an important part of a healthy lifestyle. Your body needs a healthy diet to function at its best. Eating the right kinds of foods before, during, and after cancer treatment can help you feel better, keep up your strength, maintain a healthy weight, decrease your risk of infection, tolerate your side effects better, and aid with healing and recovery. The American Institute of Cancer Research recommends making a transition from um, the traditional American plate to what's called the new American plate. A traditional American plate focuses on protein as the center of the plate. An example of this would be a large steak on a plate with a baked potato smothered in butter and sour cream and a side of buttery peas. For the new American plate, two thirds of the plate should be filled with fruits, vegetables, whole grains and beans and a third of the plate should contain lean meats, poultry, fish or low fat dairy products. A couple examples of the new plate would be taking a three ounce portion of skinless chicken breast with some brown rice. Um, a colorful mixed vegetable, and a side salad of spinach and strawberries, and a whole grain bun. An alternate meal would be a stir fry, using a small portion of chicken, lots of colorful vegetables and or fruits, and brown rice. Here are some tips you might want to write down. 
try to include five or more servings of fruit and vegetables each day that are rich in phytochemicals and antioxidants such as spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, eggplant, citrus fruits, and berries. Include more whole grains such as barley, brown rice, oats, whole grain breads, pasta, and cereals, and use less refined grains and sugars. Decrease your fat intake, especially the saturated fat and trans fat found in processed foods. Try to use more unsaturated fats like avocados, nuts, olive oil, or canola oil. Limit the use of red meats and avoid processed meats. Try to substitute dry beans and legumes as an alternate source of protein. Limit the use of alcohol and salt. Remember to include 8 to 10 glasses of fluid each day, unless otherwise directed by your doctor, and maintain a healthy weight. Eating may become a challenge for some during your treatment, and your diet may need to be modified to build up your strength, withstand your side, the side effects of treatment, and maximize your quality of life. If you're having a poor appetite or experiencing weight loss, we would like for you to try to eat small, frequent meals, oftentimes eating maybe every two to three hours. We would like you to try to eat your favorite foods any time of the day, and we would also like you to take the fluids and separate them from your meals so you won't be as full at mealtime. It's important to keep high-calorie protein snacks on hand, such as hard-cooked eggs, cheese, meat salad, peanut butter and crackers, cottage cheese, pudding, sherbets, ice cream, or custard. Try adding grated cheese to potatoes, vegetables, casseroles, chili, or soups. Add milk or fortified milk to soups or other recipes instead of water. Drink nutritional supplements such as Carnation Instant Breakfast, Ensure, or Boost. You can use these to make high-calorie, nutrient-dense milkshakes. Add ice cream, your favorite fruits, flavors, and blend. If you're experiencing taste alterations, we oftentimes recommend uh, using tart flavors such as lemon wedges, citrus fruits, uh, pickles, or vinegar to try to help with those alterations. We also uh, recommend chewing uh, lemon drops, mints, gum to try to help get rid of some of those bad tastes out of your mouth. You also might try for another tart flavor drinking lemonade. And we also recommend for another uh, taste alteration adding oregano, basil, mint, barbecue sauce, or chili powder to try to help with some of those alterations. You can also try to increase the sugar in the foods to try to alter the acidic, bitter, or salty tastes. And another trick is to try to marinate um, the meats in a sweet juice or acidic dressing. Some examples of that would be um, honey glazed chicken, sweet and sour pork, or taking um, some beef and marinating it in some Italian dressing. If you're feeling nauseated, we would recommend that you try to, again, eat small frequent meals six to eight times a day. We're going to rec recommend that you stay away from uh, strong odors and also you're going to probably do better with cold food foods versus the hot foods. You want to keep some dry foods handy to munch on, such as uh, crackers, pretzels, toast, um, and dry cereal, and eat these throughout the day. We'd also like for you to try soft, bland, easy to digest foods, such as low-fat cream soups, boiled or mashed potatoes, and baked and boiled meats, fish, or poultry. You also need to avoid fatty foods to help decrease your nausea. If you have a sore throat or are having difficulty swallowing, choose foods that are easy to swallow, such as milkshakes, mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, eggs, custards, puddings, and soups. Avoid rough, dry, coarse foods, such as chips, toast, crackers, raw vegetables, or fried foods. Moisten foods with gravies or broth. Chop up foods into smaller pieces. You may need to actually grind or puree your foods. Avoid irritating spices such as pepper, salsa, cloves, and chili powder. Remember when your treatment ends, most of your side effects are going to leave. And at that point, we're going to want you to try to maintain a healthy weight and resume a healthy diet as soon as you can. I am uh, Dr. Yasser Homsi, working at United Hospital Center. Today I want to talk about communications and the importance of communications between physicians and patients and their family. Communication is important throughout cancer care, but especially when important decisions are to be made. These important decision times include 
when the patient is first diagnosed. Anytime new decisions about treatment need to be made. After treatment, when discussing how well it worked. Whenever the goals of care change. Whenever the patient makes his or her wishes known about advanced directives, such as a living will. My advice to the patient is to trust his physicians, his cancer team, we're together in this journey. When it's time to leave United Hospital Center, you will be given the opportunity to meet with a discharge planner. Discharge planning includes coordination of community resources to assist you in obtaining nursing home placements, skilled care center placements, home health, durable medical equipment, assistance with transportation arrangements for outpatient radiation therapy, and hospice referrals. United Transitional Care Center, a 32-bed skilled nursing facility located on the fifth floor at United Hospital Center, provides an option when the patient has begun recovery but is not yet well enough to be home. Oncology patients may qualify for admission by meeting specific medical guidelines set by Medicare for skilled coverage. Some typical services include intravenous therapy for hydration, medication and pain control, skin care management, and nursing management. More information may be obtained from your hospital social worker or by calling 681-342-5100. United Home Health's professional staff can provide family teaching and support, pain management, intravenous therapy, assistance with catheter care, dressing changes, and other tasks to encourage maximum comfort and independent functioning of the patient. A registered nurse is on call seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Other services include home health aids, physical therapy, speech and occupational therapy, and medical social services. A physician referral is needed for services, but family, friends, or other health professionals may call 681-342-3200 for information. The Road to Recovery Program, an American Cancer Society service, provides transport for ambulatory patients to and from their treatment centers in certain areas. For additional information, call the American Cancer Society at 681-342. 1818 or 681-342-1804. People's Hospice, a service of UHC, serves Harrison, Marion, Lewis, Dodridge, Taylor, Barber, Upshur, Wetzel, and Monongalia counties, providing holistic support and care for terminally ill patients of any age and their families allowing them to live as full a life as their illness will permit during the final stages. Any individual may refer a patient, but the attending physician must certify the patient's appropriateness for hospice care. For further information, call I'm Jeff Balliard, I'm General Counsel at United Hospital Center. I'm going to discuss with you this morning uh, a living will and medical power of attorney. These are called advanced directives. Because for many of us, there will come a time when we will not be able to make decisions for ourselves. It may be due to a temporary matter. We're having surgery and we'll undergo general anesthesia. And obviously, when you're on the operating table, you cannot make decisions for yourself. There will be transitory times, times that come and go, when for a period of time you may be able to make decisions for yourself, and then you'll be in a condition where you can't make a decision for yourself, but then you'll regain capacity. These times may come and go. And there are also times in life when you may enter a condition that's permanent, a time when you cannot make decisions for yourself and you never will be able to. So it's important that you consider how you want your decisions made when you enter one of these periods of time. First, let's talk about the living will. This is a legal document that you can sign now when you have time to ponder, to consider what you want done or not done 
when you're in a terminal condition. That is, when it appears as if death is impending. Or if you're in a persistent vegetative state, a coma-like condition, where it looks as if you will never come out of it, and you're not able to make decisions for yourself. This is a difficult time. It's a difficult time, obviously, for you. It's a very difficult time for your family, and for your health care providers, and your friends, your loved ones. So please, complete a living will so that you can give them direction about what you want done and not done when you're in those types of conditions. Do you want CPR? Do you want cardiopulmonary resuscitation? Do you want a feeding tube? Do you want dialysis and other issues? That you may want these things or you may not want these things. Consider that now and put them in your living will and complete that so that your wishes will be done. There's also the medical power of attorney where you can appoint someone whom you trust that will make good decisions for you and will act in your best interest. And you can appoint that person now and talk with them now and go through with them what you want done or not done when you are in a period of crisis. A medical power of attorney is something that uh, gives power to someone to make decisions for you when you need them to be there. And I would encourage you to complete these kind of advanced directives now. We never know when we're going to be in a position where we will be unable to make decisions for ourselves. So no matter what your age, no matter what your diagnosis, no matter what your prognosis for the future, it is a good time now to get with your family, get with your friends, and complete these advanced directives. You don't need a lawyer to do that. You can ask your health care provider. We at United Hospital Center can help you. Just ask. Ask your health care provider, go to our medical records department. They will assist you in providing you with the forms and giving you some guidance as to how to complete these very important documents. Thank you. United Hospital Center and the American Cancer Society offer programs and services to help people with cancer and their loved ones understand cancer, manage their lives through treatment and recovery, and find the emotional support they need. In this chapter, you'll be given information for cancer support groups, spiritual guidance, and genetic risk testing. Best of all, our help is free. Support groups present information, provide comfort, teach coping skills, help reduce anxiety, and provide a place for people to share common concerns and emotional support. People who take part in support groups believe that sharing feelings and experiences within support groups can reduce stress, fear, and anxiety, and help to promote healing. Butterfly Kiss Support Group meets at UHC monthly. Sessions are open to any woman interested in receiving guidance following diagnosis and or treatment for breast cancer. Through the Reach to Recovery program, trained American Cancer Society representatives who are former breast cancer patients visit those newly diagnosed with breast cancer to counsel, teach exercises, answer questions, and offer support. Look good, feel better. An American Cancer Society program creates a support system for cancer patients through sessions with professionals on makeup, skin care, hair, and wigs. To support cancer patients undergoing hair loss, free wigs are available through the Wig Bank at United Hospital Center. Call for information and registration. Man to Man, an American Cancer Society program is a one-on-one -on -one support visitation for patients who have been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Trained volunteers are also prostate cancer survivors. For kids who have a close relative who has been diagnosed with cancer, UHC's Let's Talk About Cancer with Kids program takes children through the UHC Infusion Center, Radiation Oncology, and Inpatient Unit. A therapist is available to discuss feelings and emotions as well. Call for more information or to register. The American Cancer Society provides free online classes for cancer survivors and caregivers. I Can Cope Online includes 30 minutes of self-paced classes that are accessed in the privacy of your home and when it's convenient. Visit www.cancer.org. Losing a loved one to cancer can be a painful and difficult time. 
you may want to join a general bereavement support group or a group that is specific to your situation. The Bereavement Support Group at UHC provides support to bereaved family members and friends following the death of a patient. To register or for more information, call the Bereavement Support Line. United Hospital Center offers spiritual guidance and support through the hospital chapel and our chaplain. My name is James Morley. I'm the director of our chaplain department here at United Hospital Center. Welcome to our chapel. It's a sacred space and this is a place for all people to visit. It is our hope that you can connect with the beauty of nature, the hills which are beyond these windows, with the candlelight, with the color, with the many different sacred texts here from all world religions, and that you find it to be a place of comfort and peace and nourishment. Some folks ask me at times, how do we as um, staff people and chaplains stand within that space? And there's no easy answer to that. But one thing I do know to be true, that if, if we can connect to gratitude for this journey, for our children, for the time that we have, whether it be long or whether it be short, gratitude opens us up to truly knowing the gifts that we've received on this path. Hold on to what is good, even if it is a handful of earth. Hold on to what you believe, even if it is a tree which stands by itself. Hold on to what you must do, even if it is a long way from here. Hold on to life, even when it is easier letting go. Hold on to my hand, even when I have gone away from you. For some, it feels as if certain cancers run in their family. Approximately 10% of all cancers develop due to an inherited predisposition. UHC offers cancer genetic risk testing to individuals with a personal and or family history of cancer. If certified counseling is needed, a referral will be made by your physician. Welcome to the Cecil B. Highland Jr. and Barbara B. Highland Cancer Center at United Hospital Center. We know that patients and their families often have concerns about how to find their way to our center or to locations once inside. So we've created this video tour as a guide. Of course, our staff is always available to answer questions and to assist you. You'll find our facility has been specifically designed to be patient and family friendly. From all of us at United Hospital Center, Thank you for choosing the Cecil B. Highland Jr. and Barbara B. Highland Cancer Center. Cancer care at United Hospital Center is provided at the Cecil B. Highland Jr. and Barbara B. Highland Cancer Center located on the United Hospital Center campus on Interstate 79 at Jerry Dub Drive, exit 124 in Bridgeport, West Virginia. The Cancer Center at UHC has a parking lot adjacent to the entrance for Cancer Center patients. To access the parking lot, enter the hospital campus, drive past the main hospital entrance, and turn left at the Cancer Center entrance. Patients may be dropped off under the Cancer Center canopy. Complimentary wheelchairs are located just inside. Park your vehicle in the lot adjacent to the entrance. Parking is free. If you need assistance getting into the Cancer Center, please call us prior to your appointment. A staff member should be able to meet you at the Cancer Center entrance to assist you and your family. Walk through the Cancer Center's exterior glass doors and turn left. You'll see the Cancer Center entrance directly in front of you. If you need assistance with the doors, please press the button and both doors will open automatically. Once you enter the lobby, turn right and walk back through the patient reception area to the registration desk. 
Our reception staff will be happy to assist you with directions and answer any questions you may have. If you are traveling a significant distance for outpatient treatment over consecutive days, we have a limited number of courtesy rooms. Please ask a Cancer Center staff member for more information. Your first step as a new patient will be registration. Go to the front desk, sign your name, and have a seat until a staff member calls you to review your information. Please be sure to have your insurance information and any referrals you may need. Financial counselors are available to assist you as well. If you will be receiving radiation treatment, you will be given a white patient card with a barcode on the back, which you will need to bring with you to every appointment. When you arrive for your radiation appointments, simply scan your white card at the kiosk. This will alert our radiation staff that you have arrived. Have a seat until you're called. At UHC's Cancer Center, we know that no two people are exactly alike, and no two cancers are exactly alike either. That's why each patient receives a treatment plan tailored to his or her particular needs. Let's explore the variety of treatment options available to patients at UHC. Some patients may require blood work. Your blood will be drawn in the Cancer Center by our staff. Your test will be analyzed and results will be given to the appropriate doctor. During different intervals of care, patients will visit the diagnostics area to analyze the cancer in your body and determine the treatment required or the response the treatment is having on the cancer. You may require general x-rays or ultrasound for diagnostic imaging. UHC's state-of-the-art magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, is used to see inside of the body so doctors can find disease or abnormal conditions. MRI creates pictures that can show differences between healthy and unhealthy tissue. This unit is built for patient comfort with a large 70 centimeter opening offering more space for patients inside the machine. In addition, the unit is significantly quieter than other systems on the market. The Positron Emission Tomography Unit, or PET scan, differentiates benign and malignant tumors. UHC's digital mammography is used as a diagnostic and a screening tool and is the most reliable method for identifying breast cancer in its earliest stages. The CT simulator is used to determine where the radiation therapy needs to occur. The image that is captured in the simulation room is then sent to the treatment machine. Patients who require radiation will lie on this table, one of UHC's two state-of-the-art linear accelerators as your treatment begins, the lights will dim. A soft landscape photo will illuminate the ceiling tiles. Every effort will be made to keep you comfortable and relaxed. When the equipment is turned on, a painless beam of light will pass through the marked treatment area. Those patients who are prescribed chemotherapy will spend time in our infusion center. Even if you receive your chemotherapy intravenously, you may move about in our infusion center or relax in a private room with the television and video player. We have comfortable reclining chairs to sit in. Beds are available if you prefer to lie down. A family member or friend is welcome to accompany you. When weather permits, you and your family may choose to sit outside in our private garden patio. When surgery is required as part of your cancer treatment, you may need to stay in the hospital. Other times, it's offered as an outpatient procedure. State-of-the-art surgical procedures are performed in surgical suites, located on the second floor of United Hospital Center. Robotic surgery is performed in certain cases. United Pharmacy is a full-service pharmacy that is available for patients and the community. The pharmacy is located on the first floor of United Hospital Center, just to your left as you enter the main lobby entrance. If you are a patient of UHC, your doctor or nurse can phone or fax your prescription to us. United Pharmacy offers prescription refills 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, by calling and entering your prescription number or by clicking the prescription link and ordering online. You can pick up orders during regular business hours. Education plays an important part in United Hospital Center's mission. UHC has an American Cancer Society Resource Center and a separate education center. The ACS Center is staffed to assist in education and programs that are available, including a WIC bank. 
The Education Center is centrally located and contains books and pamphlets. Computer access is also available at no charge. The Cecil B. Highland Jr. and Barbara B. Highland Cancer Center at UHC offers decades of experience, a total focus on cancer, teams of world-class professionals, and a deep commitment to every patient's comfort. Everything you need to help you achieve the best possible outcome. Our teams of nurses, physicians, and staff are here to guide and support you. Remember, you're not alone. We're in this journey together. From all of us, thank you for choosing the Cecil B. Highland and Barbara B. Highland Cancer Center at UHC.